Moment. Hello. It's Tuesday. And we are off to... I was going to see the city, but we're actually just going to go at the corner. Just like... Uh, because we need to pick up glue. It's the side view mirror of my car has detached and I googled and we need to go there to buy it. Also apparently like a week or so ago I placed a order of Timu exciting to see what I did. Now usually I'm pretty responsible with what I do with my money and I have a bit of an anxiety every time I place an order <laughs> and spend a lot of time uh, you know, yesing or knowing. So, not knowing what I've actually ordered is a bit odd for me. So I'm going to pick that up. Also, um, I had a real bad day yesterday and the grocery store next to it has um, a sale on candy because of it's soon Halloween. So I think I will have to go there. Anyway. I will tell you what happened yesterday. Sorry, the story starts earlier than yesterday. It starts last week. <laughs> when I thought I had my life together. Mondays, I do my little pill thing. You know, place all the pills that I need. And I was out of one of my medicines and I was like, oh yeah, I need to remember next time I'm in the town to pick it up for this week. This Monday, yesterday, oops. I'm thinking, well, I'm heading into town to do the the x-ray, MRI, whatever. Later, no big deal. It's just one day. It was a big deal. Turns out, I cannot stop that medicine. I'll bet. Come on. I missed one dose. And... By the time evening came and we were heading off to Gothenburg to do the MRI, x-ray, I don't whatever. I could hardly walk. I was so dizzy and so nauseous. We stopped at the pharmacy, the drugstore, the apothecary, and picked it up. And I was like, do you think this is symptoms of not taking it? And she was like, yes. So anyway, I take my dose and... Uh, And we head off. I had asked my mom to drive, which was really good considering I could hardly walk. <laughs> we get there and it's 6.43 and I'm thinking, okay, it's fine. You know, three minutes in the grand scheme of things. Um, we had taken the GPS and the GPS had taken a proper tour of Gothenburg, let me tell you. I'm standing there waiting, there's nobody at the desk because it's really late. And then, finally, the lady comes and says, are you Julia? And I was like, yeah. And she is like, they have gone home. So, short story is, <laughs> I was late, I think a total of six minutes. So she said that the persons working the machine had gone home. Because everybody knows you need to be 20 minutes early. And I was like, no. There is nowhere it says you need to be 20 minutes early. I, I got a time, assuming that's the time I need to be here. Granted, I'm a bit late. And she said, I will try to make your new time. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> I'm so tired. Okay. I did manage to glue my mirror and I did hold the whole way back home. So I also bought a mini fridge. You can see there. Makes a bit of noise. My brother had the same, well, sort of the same that he left for me. And it didn't work. So I'm like, is it stupid to buy the same one again? Uh, opening the Timo package here. Here we have, so my random Timo haul. Uh, a spray bottle. So it's like a, one of those like literally slow mist thing. But I have been wanting one for some quite, quite some time. So this is what I've actually wanted. Yes. That I... Uh, but this is a yarn winder. So, I don't know if you can tell. Over here I have a Swift and then I have a yarn winder over here. So that's ready for me anytime I want them. But the yarn winder I have, it works really great for like up to 50 grams, I would say. After that, it just becomes such a mess. I can wind 100 grams, like a uh, sock yarn, but... Yeah, it just like the last few times I've done it, I had like rewind it after I wind it into a ball, and it just gets all tangled up. So I was thinking maybe this version, because this one will move back and forth as the wind, will be more even. I really hope so, <laughs> because I have quite a few hand dyed sock yarns that I really want to use up, but. I, uh, I did a pair of socks not too long ago for my grandmother, which was really pretty hand-dyed yarn and I had to cut it over and over because I had messed up so badly winding it. I was winding a set the other day, uh, I wanted to do a, uh, it was a sock set, so 100 gram and 20 grams. So I had bought this set through the wardrobe yarn, I think it's called. Uh, so I winded it up and then, you know, split it in half and you can see, like, I have wind this two or three times. This one looks okay. And then I did the same thing with the 20 gram ball. So I would like to start this sock set soon. But I'm, I have to say, like, this sort of makes me really anxious. So, but this is my next sock um, sock set and I did finish a pair of sock yesterday. So this is next on the list. And I thought it was going to be real fun and maybe even to try like two at a time socks. But now looking at this skein again, I'm like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> so a spray bottle and a yarn winder. And then I just plaster. I bought two of these compression gloves. Now this, I have no idea, honestly. Oh, I don't think I ordered this. Well, I mean, obviously because I didn't know what it was, but I didn't even know I put this in my cart. But it's, uh, you can put the, the ball of wool on top of it. Oh, that's actually good for this skein that is so uh, tangled up to draw it from the outside instead. And then draw from the outside. Yeah, that's good. I do really like with these that you can draw from the inside. But like I said, because of the yarn wind I had before, it's just a total utter mess doing that. Uh, and got so knotted. So that's also a hope, like I can do that again with this one. Okay, I'm a sweaty mess. We're going to go in and play with the puppy. Det 
it's pretty late. Well, it's not late, it's just dark. It's about six o'clock and you can hear Albert and his new pig. We've just had a bit of a um, grooming session. Uh, so when I got Albert, I realized that um, poodles need to be groomed like weekly. Whereas the petits we have is like twice a year and necessary. Uh, so like when you're going to dog shows and that kind of stuff. But Albert, he requires a lot more care or grooming. And he's just placing the peg by my feet so I will throw it or kick it. No, anyway. <laughs> so I have been a bit, ah, uh, well, actually, I just like, I have not prioritized his uh, weekly maintenance grooming, I suppose. Now I keep him pretty short. He's not in any like showing condition at all, but I like to shave his face and his feet and do that once a week. And for the first years, uh, I was good, like every Friday. <laughs> but now I am like, I have hardly any energy to wash myself, uh, but, I did that today, so it was like three weeks overdue this time. So it took some time, <laughs> but it looks much better now. Also, oh, I finished, I wanted to make like a little baby hat. I saw one and I couldn't find it again. There was like a baby hat that had two like knots on it. So I was like, okay, I have done quite a lot of knitting so I should be able to figure it out. I need this. Oh my god. It is so cute. <laughs> so now that I know like I, I think it works, I'm going to make like a bigger size because I'm not sure. Like if somebody has like a really tiny newborn, maybe. But I'm going to see if I can like scale it up a bit. So I did that um, and then out here in the studio when I came out I had uh, a pair of socks that had been wet blocking and they look like this. Now they just look like a pair of black socks. Uh, the yarn is uh, from a Norwegian seller and I was like well they're Norwegian like the neighbors but then it was like oh yeah uh, you actually need to pay custom fee to get them in so in the end I think I paid like a third more just in custom fee so <laughs> I had ordered uh, four different colors where uh, one was a sock set uh, so I'm like okay I need to prioritize using this yarn so uh, this idea I had like before I even bought, like the reason why I bought the yarn was because I wanted a nice uh, variegated black to use to make uh, some lace socks. So we have a lot of like birthday parties and celebrations uh, coming up. And like in Sweden, you do not wear shoes inside. You don't. And I thought now that I've been knitting, it would be really fun to have some pretty like a bit lacy socks that looks pretty um i don't know if i can but it's a really nice design and i thought because i'm so pale <laughs> i can use the black and design might show up a bit more so now i have tried them on and because there's so much lace work they're actually like a bit slouchy and the yarn is really really soft but you can see there's a lot of drape in it. So even though they took me like three weeks to make because they're so intricate and I can only work when I'm like super focused, I think I'm going to try and make them again, but with smaller needles and not as nice yarn, um, like a bit coarser yarn maybe. Like this is really, really soft. Anyway, that was not what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I have ordered some pigment and I thought uh, I'm not going to make some paint now but you still need to open and see that everything is right so let's do that. So first we have from Germany we have 
a new jar of the synthetic indigo and I think this is my third or fourth one so it's good because it's not that much left on this one now the reason why I buy synthetic indigo is cheaper like I really like this one it's super strong and vibrant but real genuine indigo it's it's way too expensive I, I cannot afford that and still keep the prices that I have I also bought this that is it's a oh it's an iron oxide but it's supposed to be translucent uh orange red I have been looking for orange now orange yellows and orange not my favorite colors but I'm starting to use them more and more like and really be interested in using them more as a main color when I'm painting so uh and because it's an iron oxide it's kind of cheap so then I also got another one of the mahogany brown I really like this brown pigment it's very warm and very red so amp it so uh Ragnar is most mostly this one and I really like it so I got another one and then I got the green earth to see if we can swap out and uh, we'll see how it looks mixing into the color but just looking at it like this it looks a lot grayer uh, the one I had before was a very like minty green color so we'll see how that looks. Uh, it's not an expensive pigment. Earth pigments tend, it, it usually isn't. The green earth is on top. So let's see if we should start. Oh, you know what? It looks just like, it looks just like the other earth green I had. Oh, good. So we have that. And then we have two kilos of yellow ochre. And then one kilo of black iron oxide. And then one kilo of, this is also a yellow ochre, but it's, it's a slightly different, it's more of a deeper hue. It's about two and I'm going to sit down and start editing this video and while I'm waiting for everything to do what it's supposed to do I have this I've actually sewn this on myself partially on my sewing machine mostly by hand because my sewing machine does not work so imagine that uh, I mentioned I was going to do two socks at a time with these two so I have two needles that are the same size. So I have made one, two, and this one I managed to do and transfer the footage. My aim is to spend about an hour and then head into the studio to clean color. I just I mean, I could do that here or at the workshop. I just like cleaning colours in there because I can leave everything spread out. So that's the plan for today. An hour editing and an hour um, paint cleaning. Uh, if I manage to clean all of them, I don't think I do because it's like six colours. Uh, I can start wrapping them, which I also need to make sure I actually have all the wraps for them. That's a later issue.